leaping out of the smoke with an unnatural speed. Silas, jumping in the air, pulling from the scabbard on his back a long onyx two-handed sword you've seen once before. That's uh, 23 points of damage. And uh, make two constitution saving throws. Shit. 11. Okay, and the second one? Critical fail. Okay. You feel as each strike of the blade cuts into your flesh, a portion of your body's strength is sapped from it. Um, your strength goes down by two, and you see like the energy fill him now. <laughs> can I pick up Silas's oh, yeah. sword? You can, yeah. Wow. You'll require a short rest to really tune and get the nature of it, but it is a very beautiful looking weapon. Okay. I'll put it in the bag of Did you, okay. did you, you picked up his uh, sword? Sword. Yeah. sword, good. That's why I had him drop it. Yeah, I noticed. We you have to find it? her, yes. she's somewhere close. I'll give him the sword. He's got the onyx sword. Uh, uh, okay, well first, as you take the sword in your hands, the large, thick obs you know, obsidian kind of onyx black blade, uh, you take a while to, to not necessarily attune to it, but enough, you know, put enough of your attention towards it where you sense oh. its magical capabilities. Oh, okay. As, as it begins to clarify, um, okay. <laughs> where 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 one voice before was not there, God a new it. voice yeah, peeks yeah, yeah, in and says, Wait, 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 wait. wait says, Wait, shh, 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 this is important, this is important. Damn it. Shush. You, are you my new wielder? What? He's got a talking sword. Throw it in the ass. What's with you and fucking weapons, man? Hmm. <laughs> Be strong, Buzzy. Shh, shh, you're not mm. here, you're not here. No. <laughs> <laughs> Then leave me till one worthy lifts this blade. I'm going to gently put it down. <laughs> okay. It's going to take at least a week of our two weeks to think about the sword. Okay. Uh, what are you going to do with it in the meantime? Sleep on top of it. Sleep on top of it. It's okay. In, it's in my room. You don't want it in the bag? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, for each evening as you lay down to sleep, you can feel the voice creep back in again and God say, and just say, Why would you sleep on top of it? Uh, the voice is, is inquisitive. Yes. I am useless left here. I seek the thrill of battle. I'm hungry. <laughs> Other evenings, it <laughs> comes to you almost pleading. Why have you forsaken me? Oh, that you took sword. me as a trophy. <laughs> what purpose is a blade that goes unused? Yo, why you gotta be like that, I girl? I remember this. And then it's Paul's silent after a few days. Oh. Was it a two-handed sword or a one-handed oh, so sword? It's a great sword. It's two-handed, big old, fatty, Final Fantasy VII sword. <clears throat> God damn it. How's that sword working out? It's a little big, actually. Is it? Look, I have this one-handed Dragon Slayer longsword if you want to get used to like a bit of badassery before you move up to the big leagues. Dragon Slayer longsword. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll trade. trade. Oh, Jesus Christ, and he's not even going to say anything about it. You're a terrible person. Well, we should keep an eye on him, just in case. So Grog, yes. as you take up the blade in your hands, you hear coming, coming out Here of the- Here we go again. Coming out of the ether, a gentle, low, velvet voice caresses the inside of your head, saying, you are you to be my wielder. What the shit? <laughs> Speak um, your name, warrior. Well, uh, <laughs> Grog. Warrior Grog, have you taken up the blade of Craven Edge? Is that what this is? <laughs> Do you have a female setting? <laughs> you hear a long drawn out sigh. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you accept my power? <laughs> there, there's a power that comes with you? What, what kind of power? Do you enjoy drinking the strength of your foes, watching them beaten before you, and that, have that very power become your own? Sounds pretty good. <laughs> you wish the shadows to encase your form and grant you oh. resilience and anger, forcing those to kneel before you in fear. The shadow? <laughs> oh. Do you accept Grog? 
Fuck yeah. <laughs> Then it is done. Together, we will accomplish great things. Oh my god. Do, I, do you have a, a, a name? Like, do I call upon you? <laughs> Can I call you Bacon? You call me Bacon, and this blade will cut the very hand you hold. My name is Craven Edge. It will do you well to remember that. Right, yep, was totally kidding about the Bacon, Craven Good. Edge. <laughs> well, I'm uh, excited about this partnership. <laughs> Clearly, we will be a force to be reckoned with. By the way, can other people hear you? Silence. <laughs> Shit. And he looks over and sees you at the doorway. <laughs> you, I take out Craven Edge. Oh. And I put it unsheathed next to my foot. <clears throat> As it slams into the wood, it sinks about an inch as the blade just slips into the wooden Whoa. floor. Um, and you can see, guys, as he pulls it out and sets it to his side, you can see shadow just drifting off the blade ever so slightly. He's not going to like using that sword, but it looks it, like it's don't. coming. It looks no, no, like no, no, it's coming. No, 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 the sword is moving a little, isn't it? Spinning it. <laughs> Spinning it now. Um, it's a On three, the tip. Three days he left. He said he'd be gone for a month. I, I don't know where he. The tavern's name. Uh, he was, um. I oh, lay the sword so right on the table and look the at the nest. reflection. The Diamond Nest Tavern. That's the one. Diamond Nest Tavern. That's the <laughs> name or address He's somewhere. just weeping now, openly, <laughs> like his Oh, hands. not on the blade, uh. not on the blade. <laughs> you hear a voice like a head go, No, keep the tears coming. What? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Drunk, are you feeling all right? Is what? Everything, not, it's, is everything, everything's all right? Everyone? Yeah. yeah. Uh, how how are you? I'm I'm fine. I just want to check in, just to see how you're doing. Yep. First of all, you seem a little pallid. All of a sudden, are you all feeling right. all right, Jeffrey? Is there anything else that might help us in our search for your former employer? <laughs> Don't kill me. Uh, He's God. lost at this point. Lost. Okay. The sword is uh, a bit iffy. Grog, <laughs> what do you think? It's torture. That... You saw. Grog. I assume you saw. Life. Can you see in this room right now? Who are you talking to, Ross? Something you what? can see. I was saying, can you see in this room right now? Can you see? Can you see what's happening in this room right now? Okay. We are totally intimidating the shit out of Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah, look, Jeffrey. Can you see what's happening I can, in there? I can. Shut the fuck up, <clears throat> Grog. What do you think? Should we let it, let him live? Well, I suppose. He's been pretty helpful. Haven't you, Jeffrey? I put it right under his chin. <laughs> Go ahead and make a wisdom check. <gasps> oh my god, you're gonna kill him! What? No. What if the sword takes over? Oh, sorry, a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Saving, saving throw! throw. Jeez, Louise. I'm a terrible person, I know. Uh, 14? 14. Oh. oh god. For a moment, the, no, the shadows no, no. begin to surround you, and you feel the urge to push the blade right through his measly little throat. <sighs> but you see the face. But it's not the, his face, it's the face of <laughs> Pike right next to you, looking up at you with this... Grog! And you pull yourself out for a second, and the blade comes back instinctually. Well, it was all part of the show. <laughs> it's just a show. All right, Jeffy, you've been very helpful. Um, change your bridges, and... Uh, don't do bad stuff. And I sheave him. Okay. What happened right. to him? How about it, Grog? I take out Craven Edge, <gasps> and I step back, and I, with a huge swing, aim right under his trin. Trin? Uh, <laughs> as the blade is drawn from Grog's back, you can see it draws this trail of shadow behind it, almost in the slow arc as he uh, rears it back for his swing. As the blade, with a flash, impossibly fast, whoosh, arcs its way across Riskel's throat, you can see his eyes open up with sudden realization as the moment of pain and death hits him. And his smile draws across his lips as the head slowly rolls back. Uh, the blood then just gouts oh. out and begins, with the blast pumps of his heart, his body slumps forward, the guards holding it as they can, just kind of spilling a pool out in the center oh, geez, of the Uriel. floor. As this happens, um, uh, Grog, 
you feel uh, this, this, this wave of exhilaration, this almost ecstatic pulse of joy come across your body. This, you, you, the sense of taking his life here with, with this blade, this first time you've really actually used it, was delightful. Oh. <laughs> I've got goose pimples. <laughs> was that good for you guys or what? <laughs> I don't know if you should be smiling this no, much. Really kind of but up. He, he was, just killed a man. Yeah, he was Have a little evil. respect. Uh, not, not happy time? Uh, no. Good. Can I turn to the side and go, how was that? <laughs> uh, you hear the voice creep up and say, now we see eye to eye. I don't see you anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the aura of shadow from the blade retracts, and the, <laughs> oh. <laughs> the blade becomes just an onyx blade. It appears to have rescinded its presence. Are you sure? Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's like the odd couple. <laughs> <laughs> Craven Edge and Grog! <laughs> Oh man, I so badly want to fix that sword to save Grog, but at the same time, I don't! <laughs> You've been acting all kinds of fucked up for a while now, and I know you don't want to disappoint her, your best friend. Something is going on with you, and it's time to talk about it. You're talking to yourself, you're talking to your own asshole, you're talking to that fucking sword, you're talking to trinkets we're picking up in houses, what is going on? Talking to the sword. And she's listening. <laughs> and she knows when you're lying. And she knows when you're telling the truth. Bike. She does give you this kind of concerned look that only like a possibly disappointed friend can give me like, I am worried about you, Grog. Honestly, I'm hurt. I'm offended. I put my fist in my hand and I bow slightly. <laughs> the silence is broken immediately by a low rumbling, rumbling voice that seems to have no particular source oh. in the vicinity where you stand that says, You come because your lands now harbor a terrible conflagration. How do you think Groom can assist? Uh, Still facing away from you. We have traveled near and far, great Grood. <laughs> It's like Sesame Street. And we would like to request upon you um, a so moment means... of your time. Why is he doing the talking? Why is he doing the talking? Sesame <laughs> Street turns around towards you and says, Here we go. You stray from the darkness that I warned you. For this current distraction is too great. Even your blood is drawn to the flames of promise and power. This shall be a test to see if you will break against the shadow. We have to fight this mother. Where do you find your strength? Uh, in, in my anger. What do you stand for? Where do you find your strength? At which point, as you're getting up, there's another blinding flash for a second and your feet are left out from under you. Uh, I take out Craven Edge. And I'd like to swing twice against. Go for it. As you slam the blade into him twice, he's trying to parry them and he's like catching the blade off to the side, but the strength is too strong and you end up jamming it into his forearm. As you pull away, the blood kind of streaks out. Um, he, with each hit, he's still focused on you and he's not showing any pain, he's not grimacing. You're just seeing the wounds being had and he's just still intent, unmoving in his expression, focused on you. Um, he made both those checks okay? Yeah. Uh, and at that moment, he looks at you and says, you carry such a dark weapon with you. Uh, Rob, it's your turn. Good enough. I'm gonna take Craven Edge, and I'm gonna stab him into the sand. Oh, shit. And I'm gonna take out the Firebrand Warhammer instead. Mm. As you drop Craven Edge, you hear this voice scream in the back of your head, You fool! This fight is ours! As the hammer lights up, you just feel this cold dread run down your spine. I need you to make a will saving throw, a wisdom saving throw. 10. 10? You can't possibly let that blade go away, and you 
drop the hammer and pick up Craven Edge once more. This is the true weapon of a warrior. You're right. And you are not going to relinquish this. <laughs> there is no way you could let go of this blade. No way at all. Reckless attack on all three swings. <laughs> this time, as the hammer falls to the ground, the flames go out and uh, Craven Edge streaks again. Uh, no, makes a saving throw. As it hits him, he stops for a second, puts his hands together. I need you to make another wisdom saving throw. <laughs> oh, we're Star Trek fighting. <laughs> uh, your vision goes dark as all the sight around you goes to black, and all the entire vicinity of this fades, except for the Earthbreaker before you, just staring at you in this darkness. And he steps towards you, one step, second step. And while his mouth doesn't move, you could hear his voice piercing into your head that just says, Grok, you are stronger than this. This thing that binds you. Where do you find your strength? In my friends. The darkness around you immediately shatters, and you can see now your friends off to the side, kind of keeping their weapons ready. Um, the entirety of, of Groon's posture has dropped. And he just bows before you. <gasps> Yeah. Rogan Scanlon, what you guys doing? <laughs> Go fish. So, what do you want to do? I don't know. I hadn't really thought about it. <laughs> I got all nervous when they mentioned a Goliath cave, so I kind of need to go boom boom. <laughs> Should I play a song so no one can hear it? Might help. Like stand guard outside the door. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, as you find one, one of the few local kind of ramshackle uh, outhouses, none are quite Goliath size, and it's an uncomfortable experience. But thank God you brought a bard along, and you would have woken up half the populace just going to bed. As Scanlan, I nothing to see here, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing to see here. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, Michael. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. no. Now, the, song, the music's playing, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just like a stall, just yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, All right, gosh. can I take out Craven Edge? Oh. Yeah? Gosh. All right. <laughs> Sounds like a rough one in there, buddy. As you, as you see, one of the wood boards splintered <laughs> out the side for a second. Oh, yep, that's tacos. <laughs> At that moment, you focus in as you can oh feel God. the blade itself grow cold <laughs> in your fingertips. The uh, you can see what little bit of light that filters through uh, <sighs> for the, the the bright orangish uh, red color that's coming from the sunset. You can see a reflection in the obsidian blade as a voice comes to your ear and says, "You fed me well." Yeah, right, I did. Right. I mean, we are really doing well. Question. So. <clears throat> When we were fighting that big Earthbreaker Groot looking guy, he called you a dark weapon. Does that. Do you have feelings and did that hurt them? <laughs> There's a brief pause before you hear this long drawn out. <sighs> right, hold on. No, no, listen. Oh, and I take my thumb and I run it against the blade real quick. <clears throat> okay. As you do. All of a sudden, the voice goes. <sighs> right, yep, sorry. Listen, so my question is as much as I love opening up people to feed you, I kind of want to know, like, what's in it for you? <laughs> Grog, are you talking to your shit? Yeah, no, you gotta let it know who's boss. <clears throat> voice creeps in again this time. There is no feeling more terrifying than hunger, and I hunger forever. You help satiate that hunger. That is our arrangement. I give you the strength of those you cut down, and I feed upon them. If this is unsatisfactory, I can and have found others who are more willing 
to be part of no, this arrangement. No, 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 I'm a big fan, really. I mean, I'm yoked out when I'm using you. It's fucking amazing. Good. I mean, people are flying apart. It's like a dream. But listen, <laughs> can you ever be full? I've never been full before. Perhaps you're the one to find out. I bet I am, actually. You're really lucky you found me a lot of these other blokes. Not even half the man <laughs> I am. But listen, so there's no luck end game. Just to be clear, you just want to drink and drink. Because I've, I've seen the blood, right? And usually I wipe it off, but you like <laughs> suck it in. And that's a little unsettling, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> My hunger grows, but the air tarnishes my blade. Perhaps we can continue this conversation elsewhere. <laughs> right, yeah, no, <laughs> probably and probably. Well, look, I like, I like the way you, you cut people open, so we'll continue this another time. And I, I'll sheave him. All right. As you sheave, the last thing it says is, don't forget, I hunger. I like kick the door open. Oh. I'm like, if you're within 200 feet, back up. <laughs> no one's out here, girl. Oh, it's just me. Are you all right? Yeah. I heard you say something about blood. Yeah, no, in my sweating, it was like a real workout. That one. At some point, you said, "Are you full?" Are you talking about, did you fill it all the yeah, way up? Yeah, the privy, you know, it was starting to give me bomber tickle. <laughs> you've fallen into a deep snore, heavy, heavy snore after drinking the wine, climbing up walls, you've had an exhausting day of... Sleeping in the sand pit. Okay, you are, cre you are, you are face down. Like a beach, just... <laughs> but in the middle of snoring, nope. this restful sleep also comes into your mind. You find yourself walking alone, a long hallway into blinding light, you have to cover your face, it's so bright, but you push forward, because you know there's only one way to go. You cannot see, but you can hear around you and sense the hallway's ended, and there's now space around you. You cannot see, but you sense an arena, gladiatorial in nature. You can hear the distant whisper and hum of crowds cheering. You sense others around you closing in suddenly. A voice, ever whispering in your ear, says, Release me. Still blinded, eyes closed, on instinct, you pull the cold, dark blade from your back and swing wide, over and over again, feeling the shuddering shock of each impact, your strength matched by the razor-like edge of your weapon, cleaving down any who would approach. The high of adrenaline is incredible and you laugh aloud at the sheer thrill of your own power. <laughs> <laughs> the light subsides and your vision returns. You look to see hundreds of people dead at your feet. Farmers, children. You see Pike motionless, cast among the carnage. You want to scream, but instead you laugh against your own judgment and intent like you're locked within yourself and have no control. And as you look up from the pile of corpses at your feet, you see a towering figure before you, cast in furs and bone, standing even a head and a half's height above you, is Kevdak. The entire herd steps up beside him, and the herd kneels. Kevdak bows looking up at you, smiling. You, you have finally made me proud, Grog. You wake up, <gasps> spittle and sand and grit mashed against your face. It's been a while since you've had a dream, let alone one like that. We need that guard. What are we going to do right now? We're this gonna is, ask him some questions. This is a coup on the on the a on grander a scale than Whitestone. I want the god. I, did, I feel I like I just we want the god. Okay. Let's see, um, you actually recognize this individual. Fucking nipple tassels. What is? Can I do this? Who? This is an individual. Uh, 
that you knew quite a ways ago, a, a, a young Goliath who was, you know, still about a half a foot shorter than you. Um, when you knew him, uh, he was named Horus because he hated it, and kind of gave him this name. And I run over and I tackle him. Knock him to the ground, put my hand over his mouth, punch him in the forehead, punch him again. Horus. <laughs> the eyes go wide and all the tension in the body just loosens. Fucking hell. You're looking big. You're supposed to be dead. Supposed to be fucking dead. I watched you beating the death. Why the fuck are you still alive? Yeah, right. Funny thing about me. So look, um, you want back in? Be alive, man. Now's the time. It's a good time for the herd, huh? Yeah. No, I want back in for sure. That's what I've come here for. To come back in. So sure Kev, that'd be more than happy to have you back, hey? I do. I've actually brought a few gifts. I unsheath Craven Edge. Craven Edge. I hold it up. Right. Isn't it? And I ask out loud, are you hungry? I mean, it's, it's been probably half a day since breakfast, eh? Why? <laughs> his expression begins to shift as the realization begins to dawn on his face. I pull it back, I stick the point in between his ribcage, and I drive it up through him. Oh! oh! oh more. <laughs> the blade now, you can see. <laughs> Peeks through the back of the mouth as his eyes just kind of go ever so dull. The rest of the blood flow pouring out the sides of his mouth. Oh, pity that acid reflux. <clears throat> Grog, my um, oh shit! Oh. Good job there. Back ish. As this is happening, the blood that has filled the mouth begins to seep back into the mouth. I mean, the trails are still there, but what's once filled to the brim has been slowly recessed, swallowed, not by the unmoving body of Horus, but the dark blade itself, now drawing from the inside. What the fuck is what? that sword, Grog? What? What is your sword doing? Well, it, n nothing. Like, it takes in, it takes in, like, the strength of who it slays, and it, you know, it takes in the blood? I did it do that? Grog. What? Drifting your way over towards the top of Western, leaving both Scanlan and Grog and Reginald <laughs> <laughs> amongst the uh, the crops. All right. Reginald, do you want some uh, ale? Do you have some? No, I do, yeah, hold on. Now you look fabulous, hold on. Get the cask out, get a pour up a cup. He I turn to Scanlan. Oh. And I say, like, you and I are mates, right? Yes, the best of mates. Right. Could I confide something in you? I wasn't aware that you knew what that word meant. <laughs> <coughs> right, well, I'm full of surprises. Um, one of which is, <clears throat> so I had this horrible dream recently, oh. and in the dream, I was killing all these people for this amazing sword that I have. Yes. But there were a lot of people, and some of the people that got killed I knew. Oh. And I feel it has something to do with this sword that I have. And the um, the secret is, I can hear the sword talking to me. Like talking, talking, or you just? You yeah. Look, so I'm telling you because you and I have such a history, right? And I feel like you won't judge me, but look, I'm afraid the rest of the group won't quite understand. I don't know if I'm crazy or if this sword is talking to me. Do you see a mouth on it or anything? No, I just hear a voice. And I was wondering if maybe I'll take it out. All the time? No, only when I'm holding it. So like, I could take it out now and see maybe if you hear it. Okay. So I take out Craven Edge. Okay, take Craven Edge. You hold it out in front of you. Um, <clears throat> Graven Edge, how did you enjoy your snack? It was a good snack, and did a you... snack it was. Did... If there's more where that came from, I would be so thankful. Did you, are you getting that? No, Krog, I'm not. You're not hearing anything. 
No, like, super sexy voice, nothing. Try one more time. No, it's not worth it. Look, um, do you want to hold the sword? Sure, that's a good idea, actually. Handle yeah. the hilt. So I grab part. the blade and I hand the hilt. Okay, as you, as you hand the hilt over towards him, there's hesitation in the voices. Only you're worthy of holding me. You will hand me to no one. Uh, oh, uh, see, now, 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 Craven. <laughs> I just, I'm starting to feel like I, I'm doubting myself. I'm seeing things and he's, he's talking to me. Okay. I, I just, I just, and we'll take it right back. I just want him to you know, experience your glory. Make a charisma check. Shit, fuck. Uh, seven. <laughs> seven. You can't give this sword up. It's, it means too much, and, and the voice in, the, in your head once again says, only those proven worthy to feed me can carry me. You grow. Frog, hand me the sword. No. You know what I was thinking, though? It, no, don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's clearly, and I take it back. You know, it's not. It's just. Maybe, maybe I'll just need to like see someone or talk to somebody. It's, it, clearly, I mean, you don't. Oh, it's talking. You don't hear it, right? I don't hear it, but maybe if you handed it to me, I could. No, it's it's really heavy too, you know. And I just and I sheave it. Do I believe him? <laughs> Seven. Three. <laughs> <laughs> he falls into the line of deceit, as adorable as it is to see him try. Grog, you want to give me the sword, and I will cast Suggestion on him. Oh. Oh. So you feel compelled now to give the sword. You're like, no, oh, that's a great idea. You know what? It's a great idea. <laughs> I feel like you should hold this sword, and I hold on to the blade, but I still hand the hilt to him. No. Only you can wield me. Go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw again. 19. Yeah, plus one. All right. You feel the influence of the blade begin to creep into your mind, but the bond you have with Scanlan and the time you travel together, you manage to shrug it off. Oh. And fighting that impulse, you still hand the blade over. Hand now. It's it's a <laughs> into the you dirt. ruin everything good. You take everything good away from all of us. Well, well it's heavy. I you gotta, you throw gotta it gotta into acid. Why don't ask ask it a question? Oh, I talk to it. Yeah, okay. and it'll talk right back. It's like that. Uh, oi, Craven Edge. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> Have you been talking to my friend Grog? <laughs> There's a long <laughs> beat of silence. And then a barely audible. <sighs> if you truly wish to hold me in your grasp, I require me to prove to me your worthiness. Is it saying something? No. <laughs> no? It's not saying anything? What? Craven Edge, how do I prove I'm worthy? What? The blade, all of a sudden, it almost seems to have a slight shift of its own, like a, like a divining rod. It, it kind of moves, and the blade shifts away from the direction of you and Grog and gently shifts over down the way to a, a, an older gentleman who's now returned to picking a few crops and just kind of points in his direction. He says, Prove to me. Is it Reggie? Yeah, pointing to Reggie. No, not Reggie. What, why are you pointing at hey, Reggie? Uh, I don't think I can. I don't think I want to, so. Uh, I think I'll try to give the sword back to Grog. Make a charisma check. Natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> it's a personality that begins to exude from this weapon. You sense that it is old, it has seen many a hand, and has probably taken far many more life. But it's not met a gnome like you before, <laughs> Scanlan Short Halt. <laughs> take this back, will you? Yeah, I'll take it back. 
it talked to you then, yeah? Yes, it did. Right, it's creepy as shit. <laughs> it's very compelling. I don't know if you should have this girl. Well, no, no, hold on. Now, look, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't fucking, you know, batshit crazy, which I'm not, and I'm really glad that we're sharing in this now. But look, hey, hey, don't tell anyone. Promise me. All right. I won't tell anyone. But I might have to ask some questions about this. Yeah, no, that's why I brought you in. You're all smart, right? And I always want to ask questions like, what's the first thing it remembers? What was it doing with Lord Briarwood? But does like, it tell you to kill things? No. No. What? I no. know it does. It just told me to kill something. <laughs> <laughs> you must be a dark wizard. <laughs> does it tell you to kill things? No. No, it just says it's hungry. At which point, you both hear a voice and hastily go, always hungry. Yeah, I you heard, heard it that, that yeah, time. Holy oh, shit! Yeah. I've got a friend in this now. <laughs> hey, while we have a moment alone, can I just mention something to you? Listen, yes, please. I, I'm, I'm not really concerned with other people's vices or bad behaviors, but Grog has this sword, and it's sort of not good. It, it could be used for good, possibly. I'll see what I'll check it out. I don't want to judge him or what he does, but just make sure that it won't kill any of us. That's all I care about. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good plan. <laughs> Orcs looking at you, and and while it was putting up a brave face, as soon as you approach, holding out Craven Edge, your muscles rippling with the the arcane strength that the blade and his fallen friends have imbued you with. As each step happens, the shadows that drift off the blade begin to drift up your arm and off your shoulder, and from his perspective, the whole world grows dark around you as you take each step, and that grimace in the orc's face falls into fight-or-flight fear. And he's, That's not really. Rotten courts of prison have giant. And I take Craven Edge, and I grab both of his ankles, and I pull them apart, and I shove the blade up under his grundle, and then rip one of his legs off. It's a horrific display. And even the Earth Elemental takes a step back. Uh, cool. Nails the Constitution same there. That's cool. Yes. Well, all that was good. Um, what's your strength at now? It is now twenty-one. Twenty-one. Nice. You've gotten seven bon b b b benefits. Yeah. You're twenty-four then, aren't you? No, it's only twenty-one because it takes two to go up a thing, right? No. Oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. So. <laughs> Every time you they fail a saving throw, your strength goes up by one. Every two strength, you get a bonus. Oh. That's how it works. Oh, I'm at 24. Which means your your overall strength bonus should be plus seven. <laughs> juicing, man, he's juicing. And slowly begins to set. You no, guys take a short that. rest. Is everyone taking a short rest? So you're not me, not me. Not you. You're okay. all on a note. You guys head back to the camp, uh, make your way into the mansion, mm -hmm. and rest for the evening. Um, you don't rest for the evening? What? Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, for, for, for not like, taking evening's rest, you get a second point of exhaustion. That puts you at your speed is halved. Okay. I want to see how far this can go. I want to push this. This is so, this, I've tried this experiment in real life, it never ends well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to learn. <laughs> you guys go through your restful evening, except for Grog. Um, resting up, getting prepared for whatever comes That's your way, except for Grog. Um, as you spend the night, Worth it. Fending off sleep, staring at Craven Edge there on your lap, uh, feeling the cold blade against your fingertips, and considering and still feeling the strength that it's imbued upon you pulsing through your veins. Uh, yeah, could I ask you one question? Yeah, yeah. Right, it was a good day, right? Like, superb. Do you remember your former owners? I do. Do you remember Lord Briarwood? I do. How was he? He was a stalwart champion. He kept me fed. Mostly. We did really good today. So I'm not gonna go to sleep. We're gonna carry this over the next day. I wanna see how hard we can push this. So close to being full. <gasps> you, you, <laughs> you, you're close to being full. Well, how, how many more? 
How many? Hold on. How many more lives do you need? I'm close. Oh, do you know? Do you know what happens when you when you get full? Like, do you get bigger? Do I get stronger? Feed me, and you'll find out. Oh boy. You get inside. Got it. Yeah, can I can I insert check the sword? Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been so happy. But, <clears throat> two. Oh. <laughs> Hard to read. Sword. sword like. Outstanding. I tell you what, if you get full, we'll celebrate this upcoming day as your birthday. If you insist, Grog Stronger. <laughs> <sighs> and that'll do me for the night. All right. <laughs> What's wrong, Grog? What? Did you have trouble fine? sleeping? Yeah, no, look, the sand pit was just, I think I, I, I need to like comb it, you know, after sand use. Sand pit, I have a bedroom for you. What? You, there's a training area downstairs no, just for no, me. You have your own bedroom upstairs. It's got a giant sized bed in it. I haven't been using it. Oh, for <laughs> crying, I, I spent minutes thinking about conjuring that. Get him, Grog. You got it, buddy. <laughs> All right, that ends Pike's turn. Uh, Grog, you're up. I might as well do what Pike says. I'm gonna bum rush the Sphinx. Straight up. Uh, makes its first constitution saving throw. Fails at second. <laughs> okay. So you steal another strength point, and just makes the strength goes down to that. So I'm at 25 now. Down You're at 25 now. Through, slamming in it twice, you pull the strength from it. As you do, a voice in your head goes, Yes. Oh um, my God. At this point, as you look <laughs> at the blade, the blade now begins to emanate a shadow aura stronger than previously that begins to also form around your upper shoulders, just drifting. <gasps> The blade suddenly extends another foot. The edges of it that were smooth project with a jagged, thorny outside. The blade itself now is longer, thicker, and far more dangerous looking than it was before. Until your next short rest, all attacks with the sword do an additional 2d6 necrotic damage. Whoa! Oh, Super Saiyan <laughs> I run down the steps and I jump into the tornado. <laughs> Pike looks over and sees you just woof, into the into the cyclone oh, and no. vanish. Oh, fuck. Grog, after seeing this, though you cannot say to anyone what you found yet, you having no tether are just drifting away from the portal, and seeing it just disappearing slowly away from you. What are you gonna do? Can I can I take my chain of returning and attach it to Craven Edge and throw it through the doorway that I see? You can go uh, ahead and roll. Roll for an attack. Oh my god! Oh my god. Should... You fling it through, and it catches something. You feel it, it's taut. You start pulling your way in, pulling your way in, pulling your way in. Go ahead and roll damage. Damage, oh damage, sorry damage. I rolled the wrong thing, please don't let it be fine. Uh, nine. Plus your 2d6 necrotic. Nice. Yep, plus 2d6 yep. necrotic damage. 30. 30, 30 points of damage, okay. You pull the chain and you make your way to the portal, you put your hands out and pull through. And as you do, the chain in your hand, you look and you can see now, uh, grasping onto the edge of the wall, you see Pike, sweat dripping down her face <laughs> as Craven Edge has embedded itself into oh, her abdomen. She's oh holding God. it, and she just looks at you with a gritted face, and she goes, "It's okay, Grog. Oh, I'm gonna You're cry. back. Oh. That's all that matters." Oh. That's the saddest thing ever. At least he didn't I do the voice. Through the door. You're, so Wait. You're so lucky he didn't do can the I, voice. Can I run to Pike? That's my turn. All right, that's your turn. Did you get any? As you rush around the corner, you see the Sphinx there. You see Pike with Craven Edge partially embedded in her abdomen. Uh, the chain now lax as Grog is standing on the outside of the portal, holding it in his hand, his eyes wide. Um, the rage has faded now, by the way. Yeah. Um, I look down at, at Pike. Hey, Pike, buddy. Are you all right? Gotten your senses back now at this point. Yeah. You look at her, and she's still frozen in place. She can't move, and you see the sweat still pouring from her face. The wound, it's, it's stopped bleeding, um, but the wound is still fresh and visible. And I face the Sphinx, and I don't do anything. Okay. Craven Edge is on the ground, right? Craven Edge is on the ground, yeah. That's it. That's all I do. 
Okay. I've, I've got a weird question I'm just gonna throw out there. Did you pick your sword back up before all this wrap happened? Yep. <laughs> As Grog looks at his feet, the blade that still laid there before you, un, you know, tethered to you by chain, still remains at your feet, tethered by chain amongst the sand. Oh my god. Jagged, still extended, still in its full form. So? How is Pike? Yeah, Pike, are you alive? I, yes. Still in a relatively uh, damaged state post-battle. You guys haven't had really a moment to recover and heal uh, what you could. Um, she seems to be okay. The, the, there's still that, that lingering sweat from the stress and the impact of the blade. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Hey, it's okay, Grog. Yeah. I know you didn't mean to. No, no, I didn't. I was like floating away. You should have seen the inside. It was just like wind everywhere. It sounds pretty crazy. Yeah, and I was like, well, what would my buddy Pike do? She would take the sword and attach a chain to it, throw it through the door, and then you were there. It's okay, Grog. I'll be fine. Yeah, but you're my best buddy. Oh, Grog. Are really we, so we are taking a short rest? Yeah. What's up to you guys? I'm gonna go ahead and yeah. burn a couple of Shorty guys. rest, and then we'll walk. What's a, okay, everyone taking a short rest? Yeah. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit. I'm so I lose all the buffs, right? Oh my god. Here's what happens. Crap. Um, so as you guys are taking a rest, you kind of step a little bit away from the group, sit down, and just kind of hold the blade, chain still attached across your lap, and just kind of look down at it. And uh, you can see it's like still pulsing with the power of all the life energy that it had taken before. And as you take a moment and kind of see to your wounds and relax and kind of, you know, recover from the intense rage and all the uh, the emotional pain that's transpired here, the blade begins to shrink. You hear the slight crackle as the metal begins to creak and pull backward. All the jagged edges pulling into the central, singular curved blade at the front of it. As it hits, it seems to almost shrink slightly smaller than it was Whoa. before, <gasps> and the metal, the metal creaks for a second, and a voice in your head goes, Hello. Make a constitution saving throw. <gasps> oh, oh, shit. I just have to steal his strength. Natural 20. Oh, That's well, what? Oh. Uh, Eat it, sword. What? For but a moment, you sense a very similar feeling. One that it's been really since the battle with Kavarn, when all of the light in the world vanished for a second and darkness took your consciousness. And that same cold sensation it starts to stem from the blade itself, like it's sexually trying to pull you into it, and you resist it. And you stand there and look at the blade, and it just, in comparison to its larger form, it looks small. It's the same size it was since you originally got it, but you look at it there, and this long, still silence as you try and conjecture what just transpired, and in that silence you hear the voice once again go, Feed you. Find something. All right, all right, all right. What? Are you hey. talking to Grog? I'm so hungry. <laughs> My stomach's rumbling. Oh. So can. Do I get a level of exhaustion back or no? The long rest. No, long rest for your exhaustion. It's a short. Sword is an asshole. Hmm. Be honest. That should have been a disadvantage. Been a, yeah, should have been a disadvantage. Roll again. Oh fuck! No. Do it. Do what? It. Do it. You have to roll again. He's, he's well, exhausted. He's yeah. <gasps> fuck. No. What is You're it? Lying. It's a one. It's a You're one, lying. It? He rolled a one. You are lying to <laughs> me. What are the odds? What are the odds? <laughs> Like five percent, and it takes away. Five percent, both times. Everybody, roll for initiative. <laughs> no joke, though. As you guys finish your rest, and you're all 
gathering the next stage of your advancement. Um, you watch as Grog stands up and starts walking into the snow of the forest, with the blade out, topples and falls to one knee, then falls face first in the snow. Ah! Grog? Grog? I, 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 I run over to him. We all run out, we run out. Run yeah, out. yeah, yeah. He's still, he's cold. There are no signs of life. I, I, gra heal, I, heal. I grab the sword and I and I take it off of his away from him, off of his person. Okay. Grog still rolled on his back. I is just dead, lifeless. Okay. Um, Pike, is it the sword? Is it the sword? I feel like it's the sword. I mean, we all know that sword has been weird. Can you greater restoration? Yes, what, great, what you... greater restoration. Well, Grog, though you are having a hard time coming to terms with it, in the back of your head, there's a part of you that knows that right now, Grog in the snow is dead. I'm grabbing the sword and taking it to a corner, and just am going to and I'm going to stare at it for a second. Wait, wait! I have revivify. Okay. Such a creature that has died Recently. Like a within minute. the yeah. last minute. Has it, has it been a minute? It, hasn't been a minute it just yet. did it. It just happened. It's really. Ha Go ahead and roll an initiative check. <sighs> oh goodness. Okay. Can I whisper? Can I? Can I assist with a whisper to the sword? Uh, sure. Can I inspire her? Sure. <laughs> okay. You do first. I just I just hold her hand and I look in her eyes and okay, okay. and I I just say please Pike please please I love him as much as you do and please. Okay. You get to his body and uh, you know him his back rolled in the snow looking up just as that window of time begins to fade for the magic to have any effect. You reach down and you grasp his cold muscled chest and you find the one singular thread, that little soul thread that's still uh, connected to the essence of his eternal being that once resided within this corpse. And you clutch onto it with the magic and hold onto it to begin this ritual. As you're certainly staring at the sword. I was going to say something to it. What do you say to it? If I were you, I'd put it back or else. It will be the last meal you ever eat, for as I will find an abyss so deep and so far, you will never taste a drop of blood again. The shadow begins to bleed from the blade and rise up with, uh, seems almost like an, an incensed fury from your words. However, you also hear a raging scream bellow from inside the blade, a familiar yell echoing and distant. I'll start, I'll start summoning my own fucking mist, man. I'm not fucking intimidated by this shit. Your shadow begins to rise over your back as well, as it begins to coalesce, these yeah. two black centers of dark energy facing off in wordless anger and lack of understanding. Um, the arm of Grog's body <laughs> grabs you by the throat and just starts clutching it as it lifts up and looks you in the face, eyes red with rage, going Roll strength check. Oh my god! Uh, he manages to close off the windpipe just for a short moment, but in that time, the red fades from his eyes, and the first inhale of breath <gasps> comes into Grog's chest, and your vision clears, and the moment of confusion hits you as you look around and notice this tiny gnome in your grip, head beat red, as you notice that your thumbs are pressed into his larynx. No, no, no. <coughs> What, what'd you do to me? Uh, uh, nothing. What the fuck is that sword, Grog? He gave you some ale. What just happened? What's, what's with you and gnomes today, man? Uh, I like gnomes, I don't know. What? Why am I down here? Grog, how many fingers am I holding up? Six. Nine. <laughs> I think it's him. Yeah, He's fine. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. Grog, you oh my died. God. Holy what? shit. You were dead. You fell over dead. What? When? Pike saved you. Where's Pike your sword, you Grog? My sword is. Where is my sword? Yeah, exactly. It's not your sword anymore. What, what do you mean? Who, where, where, where is my. Where's Craven Edge? You sit up and glance over, and you see about 15 feet from you, set up against the bottom of a tree, 
the blade is currently being crouched over by Percy, his fingers tense, his shoulders and back arched and locked, and you see uh, two shadow sources that are almost on their own subtle plane having a stare down. Shit. Hey. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, he's obviously messing with other people's property, and I walk over to the sword. No, no, no! I I run over and I block it. I stand next to Percy and I block the sword. What? Yeah, I walk over and I stop. I'm pulling out daggers and standing behind my sister. Grog, Grog, let it go. Let what? This has been something on the tip of our tongue for weeks. Let it go. Whatever that thing is, is fucked. Let it go. But it's my sword. Could try casting great, Greater Restoration on the sword. Um, I might be able to banish it. Can you do that? Oh, that's banish? a bit strong, don't you think? And it's only for. A- okay, look. If if you get bucked off a horse, right? You don't kill the horse. You just train it up a bit. Like, let's just let's just work with the sword. Horses don't try to steal your soul, Grog. Well, Who owns the? I can use it on Kevdak. It can use you on Kevdak. Kevdak has the Titan Stone Knuckles. It's a vestige that we're looking for, right? right? It's gonna be a hell of a fight, and this is a hell of a sword. He's got a vestige? Gross. The He's still just him. The sword just fucking killed you, you dummy. This the sword true. didn't make you oh, well, Okay, hold up, Pike. You know I'm not, like, scared to death, right? No. I would die by a dragon, I would die by a beholder, and I wouldn't care, like, as long as it was a beautiful death. But I don't want to die from Kevdak. Not him. We'll find you a better weapon. I don't want you to die from something that's not worth it. All right. Fine. Do what you want with it. I don't need it. All right. Should I attempt to banish this thing forever? You can banish something forever? It's called plane shift. I can shift it into its own little pocket dimension where it will stay and nothing else can get to it. I think I'm perfectly content with it being someone else's problem. Okay. All right. As you step forward and the shadow begins to emanate from the blade, you focus and concentrate. And as you do, the light of serenity begins to glow from the front of your hand. As it does, the shadow seems to be cast away. And the blade now stands currently bare before you. You reach out and touch the blade. Get you ready, recite Keeler. a few words under your breath and release the energy of the spell into the sword. Uh, go ahead and make a wisdom check. Yep. Yeah, 26. As you reach out and touch the blade, you can feel suddenly the dark, chaotic presence in there. You see flashes in your mind of a, an individual, an ancient person. You see a person making a deal with something it didn't understand. You see a flash of a punishment. You see the remnants of their eternal soul bound to a blade. You see themselves cursed with eternal, gluttonous, unending hunger and cast through the ages, the rest forgotten. And you see, just like the singular thread that was holding Grog to his corpse, a dark, dark thread that connects the sword to Grog. And with this spell, you grasp out and clutch it and tear it in two. Grog, wherever you're standing, it's like you just got punched in the gut. (laughs) You're thrown off your feet and land in the snow once again, eyes wide open. All of you freak out because it's just like how Grog fell originally, (gasps) except for he shoots up, heavy breathing, alive. (laughs) Whoopsie. (laughs) What just happened? Grog? That fucking blade. Ate your soul. <laughs> what? <laughs> you wonder this entire time how you could be so foolish to give in to something that this whole time has been using you. How could I have been so foolish? <laughs> this whole time, that fucking blade has been using me. Like I reach Wait. out and uh. I plane shift it to the pocket dimension of the Dread Emperor. Okay, you reach out and you pick up the blade, and as you grab it in your hand, you can hear the voice. You, I will. And before I can finish the phrase, you guys watch as a, a little thin slit between the planes just 
shutters open, and you have a quick glance of what looks like that distant starscape with various broken, slowly floating islands of earth and rock. You throw the blade through the small doorway, and it's kind of. Craven Edge! Help me! Yeah, I'm not craving bacon anymore! <laughs> it slams shut and is gone. Well? Fingers crossed nobody gets it. Oh, it's. So there was a, a dagger that came with it. What? 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 <laughs> I'll fuck it with you. 